Okay, we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, weekly Q and A and form checks. Sorry, we are running a bit late today. Just uh, had a few technical technical issues, but um, no, we're good to go now. So, uh, welcoming the lads alongside us, Alex Koseri, starting strength coach. How's it going? Greetings from Japan. From Japan and uh, mm -hmm. from Houston, Texas, Chase Lindley. What's up, guys? In the uh, Ripito armchair there, I see you got there, Chase. Yeah, man. Is that official starting strength merch? I don't know, but it's extremely comfortable. The only thing that sucks is that there's no recliner. It's just like a swivel chair, and it's like old school. Uh huh. And I love it. No, it's nice. What are the uh, what's going on behind you, Chase? Those look like some old Conan the Barbarian style. Uh, yeah. So parts. on my uh, my right here, closest to the light, that is the uh, champion. Painting by Frank Frazetta. Then we have John Carter of Mars. That one is Conan the Barbarian. And then the one on the far end is the uh, Death Dealer. I love it. Death Stylistic Dealer. choices for the stylized man. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for the new age man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. We've got a bunch of comments already. Uh, Teodor Marinovich, he says he's first in the comments. So congrats. Nice. Nice one. Yeah. Uh, Congrats, man. Yeah, a bunch of people saying sup, as in what's up. Sup, Jeff, J. Russo, Theodore, Benjamin Lacasse. Uh, have you got any questions? No. Nothing so Ask far. some puzzlers. Start some shit talking. Oh, tricky trick. Tricky <laughs> trick 696969. Yeah, Tuesday. How is everyone? Nice. And people He's really are. Our... He's our muse. He's he the is. bastion. He's the. the he really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of people just shit talking, basically. Um, okay, we finally got a question. Skankstro, I'm curious about some tips about gaining weight. I have trouble gaining weight. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Yeah, Do you, you mean productive trying? weight? Do you mean like in the I gain weight, but it doesn't seem to be muscle? then probably train more and eat more protein. Have that be a higher share of protein. If you can't gain weight at all, you're just being silly. You're being very silly. Or you have a tapeworm. Mm, it's possible. Chase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you either really like your abs or you're just not trying enough. Like, um, I'm currently in the process of trying to gain weight too because I've lost a little bit. And I think the best way of phrasing this is that Brian Shaw said it best is that if you're not eating and you're almost wanting to puke after each time that you're done eating, you're not eating enough. Like you have to really like gorge your mouth. Yeah. Maybe, in reality, uh, what was that, Mike? I was going to say, maybe uh, we need to get the uh, recipe for Ripito's um, diabetes inducing uh, <laughs> shake from last week. <laughs> nah, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So option one, start taking some special sports supplements. Those will, those will do very well for you. Um, option two is just to find hyper palatable foods for yourself. You know, so it's just like, I know everybody really loves the monster mash beef and rice. Like you can eat a ton of that and not really feel full. So, you know, um, don't like Chase was saying, when you're saying you're either too in love with your abs, you may just have to settle for the fact that genetically you didn't get dealt a great hand and that when you are gaining weight, more of it's fat than you want it to be, you know? So you may have to have an honest self accounting to see, you know, where you actually fall on the spectrum. Um, cause if you're trying to get big, you gotta eat big rest in peace, Rich Biana. <laughs> hey Alex, I think your mic's reverted back to the computer one. Really? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, it's all good. We can hear you fine though. So it's not worry about it. Um, right. sorry, go ahead. How's this? There we go. Now we got you. Quality, quality stereo sound. Um, all right, we got some videos. Um, we're going to take a look at the uh, the best lifts from the CrossFit Games as our first video. Um, just let me know if you guys can see this. Can you see this, Chase? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let me just move that out of the way. Feel free to chime in <laughs> with any with any form These guys checks. Make me feel strong, a, which is weird. That's, that's a rare. perfect crossfitter squat, man. Mm -hmm. I love the mullet on this guy. This guy's got a great mullet. This guy yeah, finished. Stylized. He finished yeah. second overall, I think. 
Uh, hmm. I'd worry about the bar getting actually caught on the mullet. I mean, that seems like it would be quite painful. What you got to yeah, do is when you, get, do it. when you get under the bar, you got to let your hair fall forward. And then as you pull your head back, you got to throw your hair back over the ah, bar. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Did do you have to coach that. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about what you think about these presses chase 205 pounds for third place. That guy's these are, 175 these are athletes pounds. pressing, man. <laughs> this guy's doing your like first warm up weight and he finished third and probably made a hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. Granted, I'm sure they're going to argue like, Oh, you, they're doing it strict and he's not breaking his back. It's like, dude, that's yeah. It's light as fuck. Do you think you just like enter the CrossFit games just to do this event? And just you know, not, well, not doing anything. Me, I'd, I'd and... get my ass kicked in like the conditioning aspect, but no, just if don't. It's all just lifting like out. this. Yeah, just pull out, and you might actually yeah. win the whole thing just from not doing any of those other events. Just enough <laughs> of the points. <laughs> and special thanks to the uh, powerful athlete Instagram page for uh, for this video, by the way. It's a very straightforward title. I appreciate it. It is, yeah. Yeah, like the ratios that these guys are working with with all of their lifts, like they make sense. You know, you'd think they do more overhead training considering the amount of, uh, you know, uh, jerking and snatching that they're doing. But I mean, hey, CrossFit, it kind of used to be more of a strength sport. Now it's just kind of like a almost like a circus trick. Uh, not to say that the skills aren't really worth anything, but it's basically just accumulate as many skills as possible. I think one year they had shooting, didn't they? And then they just had biking, too. So yeah. it's like they had some weird they're going, shit. They're going hog wild with all that stuff, man. It's fun. It's think, fun stuff. Yeah, one time I saw an event of them just throwing a uh, softball as far as they could. Seriously, I'd love. And they to were try measuring. That. Yeah, they're measuring distance. Was, that's like, awesome. Okay, that's yeah. Mm, I mean, useful no <laughs> things. Useful things that you need in your life is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We got. Is this so much? Like shit in the comments now. I'm trying to find actual. Um, uh, no, there's nothing worthy of really. Oh, actually, Tricky Trick 69969 had a comment about the video we just watched. He said, They're pretty piss weak considering they're the best in the world. Yeah, it's yep. not a strength sport, it's like just a separate thing. I think they call them the, the fittest athletes in the world or something like that, which I'm still. Yeah, they kind of they, they float around this kind of like fit term and yeah. then use that, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get into some form checks. The first one I want to look at, I'm pretty excited about this guy. When I saw his username, his username is The Steamroller. He's uh, 65 years old from Sweden. On the Cambrid bar, decked out with gear. Decked out with gear. What was, why did you, you had a, uh, a uh, what was your um, reasoning for his username, Alex? You had an idea about this. Hopefully, hopefully his wife gave him the steamroller username. <laughs> That's inappropriate. <laughs> Someone gave me this one. <laughs> yeah, his wife has like se severe arthritis in her yeah. hips. And he <laughs> continues. He continues steamrolling in his old age. Oh man. So what do you I, think? Chad? I guess to start, yeah, to start. Uh, steamroller, you're, you're kind of inconsistent about the depth here. Just shove your knees out um, and don't feel for depth, right? On that first one, you kind of feel like, or it seems like you're kind of inching down there and don't really know when to come up. If you shove your knees out hard enough, you'll feel a stretch out of the bottom and you'll get a slight bounce. And that's kind of your indicator of when to come up. Uh, there was another thing too. You're kind of getting, I think it was 40 in the knees as you progressed in this set. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. So you started bouncing off your knees, right? So set the knees and just load the hips. Keep shoving your ass back behind you. Yeah, all that stuff for sure. I'd start by widening the stance a little bit. Um, I think that could probably solve most of these issues without fussing around with too much. You'll still have to like actively yeah. concentrate, you know, on leaning over. Um, but you're getting a little bit too on your toes just because the knees keep having to move forward. So, you know, make everything a little bit easier on yourself. Widen the stance up if you can. Um, and another good note is that if you have fucked up shoulders and you have the cash for it, get a cambered bar, you know, like steamroller here. I hope maybe that was a straight bar and he bent it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like if you need a cambered bar, that's totally fine. You know, if you have aspirations to compete and it's a straight bar, use a straight bar. But, you know, if you have to fight your shoulders, it's a helpful tool. Yeah, I think he specifically said in the mail that he's he can't do a low bar squat just because of his shoulders. So he ended up buying the, the cambered bar. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the music he's got going on there? 
I, I love it. I don't actually, I can't even tell what genre that is. Is that I think country? It's country? I can't either. Swedish country, I think, is the... Uh... A Swedish country, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot he was Swedish, so who yeah. knows what that is. Swedish country. All right. Um, cool. Thanks, Steamroller. Um, yeah, that was, that was a good, good set. Uh, Ocean <laughs> Ricard, hey, folks. G'day, Ocean. Ocean um, Ricard. Yeah, and thanks for all the other comments, guys. Teodor, Tricky Trick, uh, Mark, Skankstro, Jeff Riggins, uh, Jay Russo. Yeah, anyway, there's a bunch of comments there. Thanks for the comments, guys. Um, Mark S, question about the form checks in the app. One, is it one lift per form check or can I, can I get a squat and a deadlift? Um, oh, I think he means if he buys one, he buys a priority form check. Um, no, it's one exercise per form check. Uh, Mark S, another question. Can I gift a form check to my friend? He deadlifts like a hunchback. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, well, I'm actually not sure we can actually do that, but yeah, there might be a way to do it. So we'll, we'll look into it. It's actually a pretty good idea. Um, okay, next, next up, we have uh, S. Gockman. Gocky. All right, everything's tilted. <laughs> I don't know how the hell this camera's set up. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, seeing depth on this one's going to be interesting. These are still a little bit high. I'm guessing we're going to need to pull the heels in, shove the toes out more, maybe widen the stance. Yeah, so these are consistently very slightly high. If you're in a very loose federation, they may, you know, one or two white lights. Um, I'd start by widening the stance out about an inch on each foot, and then you're going to want to make your toe angle more severe, meaning so either the heels have to come in or the toes have to go out. Either way, um, feel that out um, and then see what's more comfortable for you. Um, and then I would focus on just sending your butt straight down. Don't think about reaching back because I think you're going to run into some knee slide issues with how you're looking right now. Um, so fix the stance and then just drop your butt straight down. What do you think, Chase? Yeah, I agree. Especially this far away, that depth is screaming at you, at us rather. So you're going to have to get way the fuck down there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get way the fuck down. That's the... Uh... Mm -hmm. S. Gockman, yeah. Do you think that lady would have actually cleaned off that equipment if the camera wasn't there? Because at one point she looks at the camera and then she starts cleaning the equipment. I'm oh, sort of. Uh... <laughs> I absolutely hope so. Yeah. All right. So. All right, Gocky, there you go, mate. There's form check done for you. Get deeper. Mm -hmm. um, and those are pretty light, by the way. So if you're still on the LP, Gockman, that's, that's pretty awesome. Uh, keep going. Keep on keeping on, man. Yeah, man, keep sending in some videos too. Uh, Teodor Marinovic, how to approach a girl who's giving you looks in a commercial gym? If you have to ask, Just... you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost hopeless if you my, have to ask. My guess is it's probably more fear than actual uh, attraction, Teodor. Mm -hmm. So, uh... He's like, this guy <laughs> keeps screaming every yeah. squat rep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, next video we have uh, Roy Hobbs. Oh, those are some snazzy socks. That's Roy. some kick-ass socks, man. They are great. Is What's he about? To, yeah, is he, he about to bark? perform? Is he about to perform a set of uh, box squats using that pad? <laughs> <laughs> some deficit squats. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, I think it's so that he can line up his heels. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm. which is disappointing, but anyway. I'm digging the color coordination because we got the socks, the box, and the wall. Mm, that's it's a right. power move. Yeah, it's just all, yeah. he's playing this. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the bro in the background as well. He's squatting 405 on the box. That's pretty baller. Wow. Without shoes. Mm -hmm. No, he took them off. Their shoes, I think, in front. They're sitting in front of the rack. I think Chase did mm. without shoes. The big thing I see about this is um, it's just the grip. I think the grip is making this squat really unstable. See if you can't bring it back in. And as you're coming up, you're wanting to crank your elbows, and that's throwing you off 
so where you're basically getting on your toes because of the bar is a little bit rolling forward. See if you can't go a little bit narrower. You may have some shoulders issues, but uh, there's a stretch that you can do beforehand to kind of loosen up your shoulders, even press before you, you squat. So that way, getting into that bar position is a little bit easier. And then just focus on shoving out your knees and hitting depth consistently. Yeah, this is a this is a rusty knee slide one. So if you're from watching, pour one out for Rusty. Um, but yeah, so you're sliding forward uh, almost the entire time. You're not really uh, getting to the depth that we like. Um, so all the notes that Chase said on the upper back were spot on. Um, that needs to get fixed first. It's going to feel weird if you fix depth, but then still have this uh, kind of weird upper back thing going on. Um, outside of that, I think I would I would widen up the stance again on this one. You know, you have pretty long legs overall, and just kind of give yourself a little bit of an easier time. I'd start moving out each foot just an inch at a time, and then you know see how that plays with depth. Um, but in terms of priorities, I would fix the upper back, then I would play with the stance. Yep. All right, Roy. Thanks for the video, mate. Send us another one. Uh, Ringer three. Looks like he's videoing this from uh, Supermax. <laughs> I love this setup, man. It's very white. Like even his plates are starting to turn white. <laughs> you got a long torso, my friend. You have a very long torso. I feel like it just looks like that because his pants are falling down a bit. No, when things are getting tight the his... bottom. Yeah, you can see where his... Uh, his ilium is like the little hip crest. You can kind of see it. Have you ever like walked is up to a girl before and said you've got a nice ilium? Is that a, is that is that how you approach girls at the commercial gym for Theodore? <laughs> yeah, Theodore. I Just mean, go start pointing out landmarks on their body and measuring their skulls. Yeah. That's a good move. <laughs> <laughs> Brush up on your anatomy and just. Yeah, that'll be perfect. You're like, hey, can you help me study for an exam? And then she'll pepper spray you, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think this is another. I think everybody is going to squat narrow today. Seems like yeah, it seems like it. This guy's like, he has like his deadlift stance instead of his squat I know. stance. But yeah, man, I definitely start by widening out the stance here. I'd say two inches. So if you see how like the pacing of the squat, it's coming down pretty standard. It hits like this little clipping point and then it re-accelerates. So essentially what's happening is that, you know, you're going, you're going, you're going, it's stopping and then you're having to round off the lower back for, this, for, it to, for the squat to continue. Um, if your stance was wider, you really wouldn't have to do that. So just move the feet out and you should be, you should be totally fine. Otherwise, I, I like these. What do you think, Chase? The only thing I may have an issue with is, is the eye gaze being so close to the wall. And I, I've seen this with people who have really long torsos is that they're going to have to start looking up a little bit more than like a normal torso or even a shorter torso person. So I, I usually tell a person to look out like another four feet in front of them or even six feet if they have a, a long torso. So with you, you're probably going to have to look up like, you know, the sixth cinder block high or so and just maintain that gaze, which is going to be kind of difficult because they're so close to that focal point. But I think that's also going to help you uh, keep you in balance a little bit easier too, along with the, the widening out of the stance. Yeah, man, just turn around and look the other way, like squat the other way. It's probably yeah. going to sort that out. Uh, hey, he's got the uh, Ripito uh, plate rack in the back there with the, uh, yeah. the, narrow, the narrow prongs. Mm, interesting. It also seems like everything in this gym is covered in chalk, including him. <laughs> everything has like this white. This, yeah, this thing does on look it. like a prison. Yeah, yeah. I think it is <laughs> a prison. Made. Yeah. How did you yeah. smuggle the phone in? Uh, what's this guy's name? Ringer, Ringer three. He maybe he may be one of the guards. He's just like fuck it. Like there's no one's climbing a fence right now. I can't shoot him, so I'm just gonna get my squats in. Man, I feel like if I was a prison guard, I would be taking special sort supplements, and I would be 400 pounds. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta oh, be yeah. huge to be a prison guard. It's not a prison because he's facing the wall and there's no way you would face the wall and, you know, right. you're prone, <laughs> prone to attack. Exactly. Or maybe that's what Smart he's prison <laughs> stopping for. Um, all right. Thanks, Ringer. Uh, oh, we've got a question. Um, Tricky Trick 696969. What's the opinion on types of uh, lifting belts? I currently have a pretty soft rogue single prong. People have been telling me to get a thick lever belt. What are your thoughts? I personally do, do not, not like the lever belt. What's up? 
Are, are they called? Uh, they're called lever belts or lever belts. Well, I mean, it's in Australia we pronounce it lever. He spelled it with an A. I feel like we're just adding letters at this point. Well, oh Tricky Tricks God. in Australia, so um, you know he understands what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. The rest and of you might struggle. Chased lever. So I was freaking out for a second. I was like, have I been saying it wrong this entire time? A lever belt. <laughs> not bad, not bad. We got to say it with an accent. Yeah, lever. <laughs> lever belt, mate. <laughs> All right. So what are your thoughts about belts? So anyways, those monstrosities of those belts, I can't stand, man, because there's not enough play. So once you have a, a, a lever belt, whatever the fuck you want to call it, it's fixated in mainly two positions, right? The unloosened or maybe slightly loosened. Uh, position of the of the set and then you have the tight version right so the uh, where you fully snap the uh, lever the lever into position that's basically the two settings whereas if i have multiple holes i can one gain weight lose weight and i have all this play in the amount of holes right so whenever i tell people to like sometimes they get too tight with their belt on a deadlift if they can loosen up a hole right before they pull it's way more beneficial and they can actually set their back. But with a lever belt, they can't do that, right? It's, it's fixated. Yeah. What do you think, Alex? Um, if, if you are a squat specialist and you just want a specific setting for one lift, go for it. You'll have to use multiple belts. But like Chase was saying, for most people, especially if you're not very lean, you have different settings for your squat and for your deadlift. Um, and if you are very lean, your bloat is going to be different from day to day depending on the time that you're training so if you're training fast in the morning your waist may be an inch and a half you know smaller than it would be otherwise i know for me at the end of the day i'm going out a hole in my belt which is going to be a lot different for me than if i am hitting it straight in the morning you know so like lever belts they don't give you a lot of options um you know i think I, i'd stick with the soft single prong that you have now man yep uh teodor uh opinions on unpasteurized milk compared to normal milk for weight gain. It is fucking amazing. If I wasn't a diabetic, I would be swimming in unpasteurized milk. It is, the taste is amazing. It's a lot more creamier and dense calorically than I think the, uh, the pasteurized version. But man, the, the taste is what gets you, man. You can literally drink that stuff like water. It's good. I sort of feel like it really depends where the cows are raised <laughs> as to how it tastes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like you don't want the feedlot feed unpasteurized milk. <laughs> Me personally, I've had it, I think, three times. So outside of Wichita Falls, there's a bunch of dairy communities. And I went to school outside of Wichita Falls, like 20 miles away. And there's nothing but dairymen out there. And one of my best friends uh, growing up in high school and still to this day, he owns and operates his family dairy. So, you know, when I'm over there sometimes helping him or just, you know, right before we're going to go out and party, say, hey, man, do you want any milk? I'm like, yeah, sure. So we go over to the tank. So it's it's been treated once. So technically it's not like up to like, you know, selling it in grocery store standards, but it's still killed of most of the bacteria. And then certain stuff that you have to do to kind of like reduce the uh, the amount of, I think, cream or I don't really know that process. But it's not technically what you get the whole milk at like the grocery store. It's a lot more dense and creamier, like I stated oh, earlier. That's the um, but, uh, that's homogenized the homogenization process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. it. Yep. But it uh, is amazing. The taste yeah. is fucking. I've amazing. never been blessed to have unpasteurized milk. It sounds great. I'm a fully on board now. I'll sign my life away oh, for it's it. Amazing. Yeah, I went through a phase of being a bit of a hippie, and um, yeah, in Australia it's illegal to sell it, uh, but. They actually, in the health food shops, they, they call it bath milk, like as it B-A-T-H-A-O, bath, <laughs> as in it's like a cosmetic product and it like specifically uh, says okay. for cosmetic use only. It's like, you know, and it's like eight bucks per liter. So if you actually had to fill up a bath, it would cost you about, you know, $3,000 <laughs> to take a bath in it. But people are just using it to drink. And uh, yeah, I, I, like, I like the taste of it too. And I like having the cream on top and... You know, that first cup, which is just basically all cream, is awesome. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Tito, get on it, man. Um, I think you can you can kind of keep that milk out and it won't um, spoil. Like, I don't know if that's true or not, but I think, like, French people do that a lot. And a lot of European countries will just leave, like, their milk in the cupboard or something like that and just yeah. let it sit there. 
That turns into sour I'm cream. completely off board now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah. You lost like me on the room I'm glad here. that we're – America, I'm glad that we've adopted a better usage for that. <laughs> um, cool. Theodore, where are you from, man? Let us know. I'm kind of curious. Uh, okay. Up next, we have um, R. Balboa. Well, I think we've had him on a few times. So let's see if his uh, squat's improved. We squatting or pressing? What do we think? Oh, we're oh, squatting. No, it's nope. going to be pressing. Press. Okay. Press. Amazing. I feel like we should have Eye of the Tiger on while we're watching him do this. Yeah. These presses ain't bad, man. Uh, it's just mainly the timing. You're kind of muddling the two together. So in your brain, you're going to have to say the sequence, right? Hips, then press, or like a one, two, one, two, synchronized uh count and then hold the lockout a little bit longer you're kind of half-assing that shrug at the top make sure that you're actually feel your your traps hold all the weight and make sure that the bar is secure overhead but the big thing is slow this down get the timing a little bit uh ironed out yeah the, so the the way that i teach this i always say hips and press hips and press hips and press um so the hips motion is not when you want to press the and motion is when the rebound is happening, the press is when it's pressing. If you press on the and, it won't ache for long enough, and you'll press a little bit early, you'll just stay in your layback, you won't really get any of the rebound. You need to have your hips go forward, that and counts to happen for the chest to come back, and then you launch the bar. Um, so if you've ever taken the dancing class, anything like that, they'll use that and count right in the middle. That's what you wanna think about, hips and press. Um, so segregate that timing out in your brain, um, be patient with getting the bar overhead. And then when it is overhead, um, make sure to stack that guy up there. It should feel like you can hang out there for a few seconds once it's actually locked out at the top. If you're rushing out of the top, you know, you're not getting the full benefit out of the rep. Yep. All right, Rocky. Thanks for the video. <clears throat> um, okay, Mark S. Borat recommends breast milk for training. There is an NPR. There is an NPR show. Uh, I don't. I don't know which one of their many podcasts it was about the breast market or the breast milk market. <laughs> the breast market. Um, <laughs> the breast market. Yeah, the, uh, the breast milk market. Because apparently um, there are a lot of women who, after they get pregnant, will uh, continue to stimulate lactation so they can sell it. Because apparently it is incredibly expensive, and bodybuilders will buy it. It's like one of the most expensive liquids. It's significantly more. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I think I want to say it was like, I think the pricing point was like twenty to twenty five dollars a liter. So, Borat knows what's up. Holy shit! What do you reckon, Chase? You reckon this is the thing that's holding you back from the four hundred five press? Is just a gallon of breast milk? If if that was it, I'm fucking sucking on some titties, man. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. But anyway, <laughs> I mean, maybe well, I will find moms and I will just milk them. <laughs> I bring my own tail and. Bring your own pail. Oh, a pail. You're like, listen, I have some friends who are dairy men. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should have been going to the farmer's wife, not the farmer. Maybe that was the uh, problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Theodore says he's from Croatia, but he lives in London, unfortunately. And yeah, farmer's market got full on grass fed A2 raw milk. Mm, cool. Okay. Right. My soon-to-be brother-in-law's in -laws from Croatia, so I think I'll be going out there for a wedding. So I'll nice. meet up to you, Dor. Well, he's in London, so... Well, uh, when he returns home. When he, <laughs> I don't think he can leave his house at the moment, so I don't think it's going to be for a while. Um, yeah. Tricky Trick 696969. People think the lean back on the press is bad form, in quotation marks. Uh, could you explain why this isn't the case and why it's not dangerous on the lower back? So you adapt it's all to it. about, yeah, that's basically it. Go for it. Yeah. That, and, and you'll see, like, especially really petite women who are really flexible, they'll have a layback. And anybody who is pressing heavy relative to whatever strength they have, they have some sort of layback. Now, the degree of layback depends on the person's flexibility. Like, for me, for example, I have a drastic layback, but I'm also very flexible. Like, I can do the splits and stuff like that. So whenever I lean back, it's not that bad for me because I'm used to it. And I also, I train and I've been doing this for a long time to where like my abs have, can support that load and all the trunk musculature can support the load. 
we don't really tell people right off the bat to lean back as far as they can and then, you know, do a standing incline bench press with it. Yeah. Yeah, it develops over time naturally. And if the argument is that lower back extension to those degrees are bad, um, you see more degrees of extension in many other things, you know, so most commonly the plank. So like when people are having a really shitty plank and they're like, oh, I got to hold it for a minute and a half, they are normally swooped well down into what we would call overextension. Similarly, whenever you're looking at a kip, ton of extension there. If you're looking at a handstand push-up, ton of extension there, oftentimes more severe or getting towards the severity of Chase's layback, you know? So it's just like spines are relatively resilient. You know, don't get hit by a car, but if you can bend that way, you can likely bend that way repeatedly. Um, so the extension argument under load, I don't, I don't really think it holds too much water. Yeah, we actually had a guy on YouTube who's been at your chase. He's like, uh, he's not impressed with your layback in the YouTube comments. Fred Tedison is the guy's name. Um, he said something like, he said, the guy is pressing pulling weight, which isn't exactly the smartest thing to do. At one point, if he continues towards 500 or higher, he'll push it and injure himself. I guess I better listen to Fred. Yeah. I don't know. He's an expert. so He is. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually replied to the comments stupidly. <laughs> I said, uh, someone better tell those <laughs> Olympic weightlifters to lift less weight because they're going to injure themselves. And then he replied, hey, idiot, <laughs> to me being the idiot, um, <laughs> the world record is approximately 500 pounds. If Chase is doing 80% the world record, it's more likely or not he'll injure himself. Trees don't grow to the sky at one point. It levels out and trying to pass that barrier can lead to injury. I don't think this guy okay. has ever taken a risk in his life. Some people are really, really risk averse. <laughs> and normally, you know, no one knows them for anything. I don't know. People what... know Chase for his press. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about trees, but anyway. Um, all no. right, there you go. There actually were a few other questions for you, Chase. Um, why do you stop the training uploads, I think, to the forum maybe or the maybe to Instagram? Oh, probably, yeah, my Instagram. Sometimes I get into this weird funk where I just want to train. I, I, I kind of call it, call it like my little dungeon or like my hyperbolic time chamber. I just want to like get into my little zone. I don't have to worry about anything. Like I have a meet coming up. And like I, I, sometimes I find myself just doing shit for the videos and I don't want to do that. Like I just want to train, put on some music and just have fun. Like I have some videos saved up and stuff that I eventually, you know, may post, but like, that's not my, my, my number one goal. Like this is just a training log for me. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right. Uh, who we got next? Uh, Paul 75. Anyway, he's Paul. a repeat. He's a friend of the show, I believe. Oh, Paul's been on a bunch of times. Yeah, Paul's been I on remember those here. fancy shoes with the big yellow yeah. curves. Don't think about finishing with your head. Think about finishing with a shrug. So you're not just trying to bring your elbows together and pop your arm through and lock it out. You're trying to elevate your shoulder. So your shoulder needs to go from here to here. That's what you're trying to do. It's not just straightening the elbow. Both of them need to happen. So um, if you have a buddy who's there in person, just have him put his fist in front of your nose and tell him not to punch yourself. You will very likely not shove your face forward into it. Um, otherwise, just slowly focus on uh, controlling your head movement and focusing on uh, finishing the shrug. But I think the bounce is pretty crisp. It's not super heavy for you, so it'll probably get a little bit better as it goes on. You think he's grips a bit narrow? Yeah, um, yeah I, th I thought that maybe widen it out like an, an inch or so, but I'd rather it be kind of narrow like that. The main thing is this, his elbows, right? He's not really squeezing his armpits. And as you start, as you see him start to press, his elbows are flaring out. He needs to keep his elbows a little bit more forward and uh, in. But yeah, just like what Alex was saying, try not to involve the head in the movement, just the hips and then shrug. Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I think so Chase, I guess let me know if you agree with this, but uh, I was going to say, do you prefer slightly too narrow or slightly too wide on the press? I'd rather it be a little bit too narrow due to that, that moment arm from the uh, shoulder joint to the, the bar in the hand will always cause a little bit of an impingement if you don't think about the shrug. Because sometimes we'll f people will fuck it up and just kind of half-ass shrug instead of actually finishing it. And that always causes a little bit of uh, impingement. Or just some shoulder issues down the line. Yep. 
Uh, sorry, I was just chuckling at some of the comments about all the breast milk. There's a bunch of comments about breast milk. Some of them are pretty funny. Um, we've got a user. Celebrations is the user's name. I've been in the breast market for quite some time now. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, to your door, gallon of milfs a day. It's not bad. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Theodore. I see uh, one breast milk is about $60 for three quarters of a gallon. All right. On eBay. How many liters are in a gallon? Somebody from a communist country tell me. Anybody know? It's four, is it isn't like it? three? Four, three it's or like three? Point five or something. Okay. I think my price guess was pretty correct then. Nice. Yeah, not bad. There we go. I'm tapped into the breast market. <laughs> um, Got to watch, watch the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pork belly, pork bellies, and breasts. That's what you, what you got to follow. Yeah. Um, too many hands. How do we get our form checks reviewed? Um, we take them either through the Starting Strength app or the Strength Club app. So um, either or, we'll we'll review them. Um, comments: Does breast milk have estrogen estrogen in it? I assume it would have some, wouldn't it? It definitely does. Estrogen also isn't bad. You have an amount of estrogen in you, and let's say if you were taking special sports supplements, you would also have to take more estrogen in pairs as well. So, Okay. There you go. All right. Next video. Uh, MJDC. We've had this guy on quite a few times, I think, now. I wonder if he's got some lifters this time around. I think he, he, oh, he's finally got some lifters. Hey. Oh, we're seeing the deadlift. Okay. Yeah, you had those those uh, weightlifting boots on last time, the bro boots. Still got the mask on, unfortunately. I'm just gonna fast forward this. Yeah, you're starting with his hips a little bit too low. Um, what? probably happened is you seem like you were in the the correct setup and then you just kind of i've seen this with a bigger guys kind of like yourself you're just really unflexible so getting into that that setup process of you just reaching down and taking grips outside of your shins and not really letting your shins bend you'll always kind of bend your knees a little bit too much and then let the bar roll forward to get your hips into position you got to keep your hips up a little bit higher. And if you have to widen out the toes a little bit more, that's going to make it easier for your, your stomach to sit down and your ass to be up in a higher position. Yeah, I completely think, agree. Um, when in, for some guys, you know, they'll just kind of terminally end up in this more rounded back, lower hip position, just with the way they're built, especially if they have a bigger belly. It's not something that you should accept. Continue to fight towards getting everything on the heels, getting your hips back and your hips up. Um, so think about pulling the entire thing back. Like if someone was behind you holding your hips and they were physically pulling everything backwards, bringing your hips up. Um, I would just start there. You know, you should feel a stretch in the back of your legs and your hamstrings right before you set up for your pull. Um, I think these are totally serviceable. I would change the descent a bit because you're still coasting it over your knees. Um, but your cue for the longer term during your de developing your deadlift, it should be getting the hips higher, getting the hips shifted a little bit more back. Yep. All right, MJDC. Thanks, man. Uh, Huseman, M. Huseman. So the bar's right up against his shins at setup there, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, I think the bar is actually like angled to his shin. Uh, I think the bar is actually behind Midfoot on this one. As soon yeah, as it gets off the, the ground, you're going to see it drift forward a little bit. Um, I would start with the, a little bit farther away from the bar and then focus on back extension. Um, you're bracing pretty well. You know, there's not too much movement in your back, but we're not seeing extension where we want to. Um, ideally, we want to see that coming from the lower back and the upper back. And it seems like at the end of the video, you kind of shirked in pain. So that's not good either. So on that last rep. But um, yeah, I think I would, I think I would just focus on uh, figuring out how lower back extension works, see if that's possible for you. And then just make sure you're being very diligent about it. I um, might start with the bar slightly farther away and get the hips down to give yourself more of an opportunity to set your lower back. Yeah, that and 
probably widen out your toes, man. You're still like way forward with the toe angle. Um, that's going to help get your knees out of the way and your, your stomach in a position a little bit easier. Jeez, he was grimacing a fair bit at the end of that set. I don't know if that's just fatigue or he's actually something's hurting. But I don't know if he that, he, so to me that it, looked like he tweaked his back. Let's have a look at it again in slow mo. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a man who is enjoying deadlifting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that shrug looked painful. I think that's going to cause him some issues. But anyway, um, all right. Thanks, Husey. Uh, Johnny XFI. I actually watched this one before, so. Um, it's a very ominous deadlifting lighting. We'll just wait for the actual lift and we'll. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to fast forward through this a bit. There we go. This looks like a sort of peephole camera, to be honest. So, oh shit, man! What was his name again? Um, Johnny like XFI. Johnny. All right, Johnny. So, um, we really want to avoid those knees coming in that dramatically once the bar starts getting off the floor. You know, um, so people who don't have a lot of leg mass or if they've had something like rigots uh, in their childhood, this can be quite severe. Um, with the ratio between your lower body and your upper body, I don't think that would be a rare case. I don't, I don't think that would be too out of the realm of possibility. Um, to start, we need to move your stance in pretty significantly so that your knees have less of a chance of coming in. Okay? And then when you are trying, when your knees are trying to come in, what you need to be thinking about is shoving them out into your elbows. So I wouldn't pull your stance in maybe two and a half inches in total, three, uh, three inches in total, and then focus on shoving your knees out to the side. I would also pull the weight down not super significantly, but enough so that you can control your leg position. And once you can control your leg position, everything also starts smoothing out. Um, seeing this, I would bet that this is quite the problem on your squats as well. So definitely send in a video for your squats and making sure that you're keeping your knees in a, in a much more stable space. Yep. Yeah, um, and, and with that, that kind of that D-low too, it's gonna get, it's gonna work your grip too, because I feel like you're you're doing a weight to where you can easily hold. But, you know, you saw someone or someone said, hey, man, grab some straps and you don't need straps yet unless you're doing something super, you know, nosebleed, teeth ch chattering heavy. Yep. All right, Johnny X. Um, too many hands. I can send through starting strength club. <laughs> <laughs> is that a new app is that a new app that's in development um yeah you can send through either of the apps um or just email i think it's a support email for strength club just email me through there and we'll get we'll get it on the show um starting strength has entered the comments so we've been busted fellas it's uh it's all uh, over oh it's, shit. Uh, yeah we're, we're oh, in big no. trouble now uh starting strength what kind of fruitiness is this we have a lot of fruitiness, I don't know, international rip. fruitiness. It's, it's definitely not Rip. There's no way. Rip, I don't think Rip knows how to use YouTube, does he? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. It's Rusty Nick or Bree, one of the gang. No, nah, well, it could hello. be Pete. Probably Pete. Could be Pete too. Pete or, Pete or Nick. Yeah, anyway. Pete. Yeah. Um, Teodor Marinovich hip drive. Okay. Oh, Husey from before he said, with the deadlifts, he said, not painful, just tired. That's great news. That is good news. That That's is. very good news. Yep. Yeah, focus on your lower back extension, man. Get that sorted out. Yep. Celebrations says innovative camera angle. I think about the last guy. It looked like a peephole camera to me. It was all kind of, you know, covered up. And I mean, don't ask me how I know that. Um, starting strength. Chase loves having that mic up close to his face, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And we have to do yeah. it. Otherwise, he won't hear us. Um, yeah, we're not as. I offered to give him one of the the ball microphones like this, but he said no. <laughs> Only if it comes with the straps that go around your face. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I do it so I can protect y'all from the COVID. If it's right in front of my my mouth, I don't give the part. Uh, that's true. Dude. That's right. It works as a mask too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Next up, Joe Pescato. We've had this guy on a few times. I think he was doing RDLs oh, he last was doing, time. Yeah, RDLs last time. What's he got on his laptop? 
That's a pro move watching TV while you're lifting. He actually is looking down at it as well. <laughs> it might be like football or something. Anyway. Joe, what do you, think you need to flex down? your quads a little bit more. Yeah, he, he just needs to flex his quads a little bit more. Get your eyes in a stable position. Don't have anything distracting around you while you're trying to press. The press is hard enough with the it being the longest kinetic chain, right? You got to keep your eyes in a stable position. Uh, throw your your waistband or something that's a little bit high around your hips. So, like I, I like to use the Q waistband, belly button, somewhere in that area, your bladder. Punch that forward and hit the wall in front of you, and then. Your shrug looks nice. Just keep the uh, armpits tight. You may need to actually bring in your grip about a finger width or so. Yeah, I'd start with moving the grip in. Um, what you want is to have the forearm stacked on top of the upper arm. It should feel like there can be like a little bit of rebound just from your forearm touching your bicep. Okay. Um, so I'd start by moving the grip in. Um, and then really, we don't want the head to tilt back. So when the head tilt, tilts back that dramatically, you're going to have the proclivity to leave your chest back. So what you want to think about is once you send your hips forward and then the pressing motion happens, the chest needs to return out over the hips. If you leave your head backwards, you're not going to get your chest forward. Okay. Um, so aim your nose right at a point straight out in front of you. Don't tilt it anywhere. Okay. Um, and then definitely don't watch things on your TV while you're pressing. What do you think about the wide stance? Because that's probably a bit wider than is normally I recommended. It's, it's I fine. don't think it it's, helps yeah, keep your... Really fine. Yeah, it keeps your knees locked a little bit easier. That last rep's pretty impressive. Like, he throws it out in front of him and he recovers it. I don't know if you guys saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I think the consequences of going too wide, you have to be, like, impractically towards hilarious wide for it to start really yeah. playing with things, you know, yeah. so. Yeah, this rep here. Yeah, he just, mm -hmm. and he, he recovers it and gets it as well and shrugs it out. So, yep. good grind, Joe. Um, okay. Uh, Francesco.de. He was on last week. Yeah, I think he was too. Yeah. Is it Delaware or Denmark? Uh, no, he was. Uh, he's in Europe. Yeah. He's in Europe. Well, mm -hmm. this is this is the last video we're going to be seeing from him for about six months. So, uh, <laughs> I hope it's a good one, Francesco. Uh, Rep one was pretty solid. I'd start by moving the gaze up, um, like Chase was talking about before. Um, I'd probably pull the gaze up maybe about another four or five feet and then go from there. It'll probably help you reinforce a better chest position. Um, these are moving fast enough that I don't know if you need straps. Yeah, I agree. Um, he's probably starting a little bit forward too. Rock back just ever so slightly into where you're in the middle of your foot and just press through it. Right, press your feet through the floor and all being balanced over the middle of the foot. Yeah, I think towards the top, you're starting to get a little bit toe heavy um, and you're kind of falling forward. At the top, you should feel like you are locked out confidently and like you could hold it for a few seconds. Um, if it feels like you have to pop out of the position, same thing goes for the press. You're probably forward or behind midfoot. Um, I would try to rock back as you're pulling up a little bit. Um, the later reps look better than the early reps here, rep five in particular, but otherwise I think these are pretty solid start. Yep. Good work, Francesco. Um, oh, we've got a few comments. We'll just get through them now. Um, too many hands. I emailed, emailed mine, my form checks. Yeah, I got those. Thanks. We, um, there is about a four week wait just cause we have so many through the app. So we'll, sorry about that. Um, but I've got them anyway. Um, too many hands. My gym doesn't allow chalk. Shaking my head. Okay. Um, is training in Europe even worth it? <laughs> oh, I don't know what that means. Yeah. Use, use liquid <laughs> chalk, man. You can probably get away with using liquid chalk. Just be polite. Be nice to the gym staff and they won't be me and you. Mm. Yeah, um, just be on their good side. Yep. Um, someone said... Communists aren't allowed to do starting strengths before. 
Communists are not allowed to do starting strength. That's just a comment. Nice. It's okay. a statement. The statement <laughs> of fact. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Um, El Noir, who we've had on. Oh, friend of the show, El. Yes. One of the one of the OGs. She started sending she videos very early on. She is, and she's got this amazing rack and crash pad system going on, which is very impressive. I'm wondering if this is actually just her bedroom. <laughs> It's just a one-bedroom <laughs> studio apartment. <laughs> yeah, the kitchen is right behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. Was she standing on like the west side box there? That's crazy. Well, I think it's. But I mean, it yeah, works. I mean, I think it's probably an apartment, and she, she's got the. She's needing to get the platform up to yeah. the, the crash pad. So. Um, yeah, she's probably like on the second floor, or one of the higher floors. Mm. I'd start with your hips a little bit higher. Um, that first set looked a little bit good, and then subsequently, as you go further into the, the, the set here, you're kind of getting a little bit lower each time. So if you need to, stand up after the first two reps, kind of shake yourself out, and kind of go through the setup. The setup is pretty easy. It's just five steps, and it's it can be quick, too, because I you've done this before, I'm pretty sure. Um, so you just have to refresh yourself, make sure you're one inch away, and as soon as your, shin, your shins touch the bar, your hips freeze, right? Um, set the back a little bit harder. I think you dropping your butt too is kind of, you got into that habit of setting your back that way. Just try to keep your butt up a little bit higher. Yeah, I, this is one of the more common things. Once people feel like they're getting in a groove with the setup and with deadlifts in general, their hips will go down as the reps go on because they think like, oh, rep one's, or rep one setup was great and they can just blast through the rest. Your pre-flight checklist before each rep should be high hips. Just think about that. You'll be totally fine. Um, you know how to squeeze your chest up. You know how to get your back in a good extension. So just make sure that that box is being checked before each rep. Um, you know, when you're doing your self review, if you're having a hard time getting through that, like Chase was saying, you know, it's okay to take a step back and then reevaluate what you're doing. And then a golden comment from starting strength, <laughs> communists who do starting strength, don't stay communists for long. There you go. <laughs> Another true statement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, cool. Thanks, L. Thanks for the video. Uh, DV Savidra. He has two pairs of lifting shoes. That's nice. Hmm. I don't think I could deal with having that many different colored plates. <laughs> Some way too OCD for that. Uh, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do if you're in Europe or California. <laughs> <are you? laughs> Whatever it takes, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is one of the rare times where we'll see people starting too wide. Um, and th that could be an artifact of the crack on your floor. You think if you bring your stance in, you may be overlapping that a little bit. In that case, just shift your rack if you have to. Um, but I'd pull your stance in by about two inches on each foot and then reevaluate from there. Um, you're off to a good start with the way that you're holding your upper back. You're cranking at the elbows a little bit. Um, think about fighting to keep your chest up rather than leading with your elbows coming out of the bottom. Um, I think most of this should sort itself out once you fix your stance. Yeah. If anything, it seems like the bar is almost too high. See if you can't get it a little bit lower. And then I would personally take off a little bit of weight. I think you're, you know, it, it's a little bit too heavy and, You've been kind of compensating, maybe hitting death by widening out your stance, or just like Alex was saying earlier, just maybe just kind of gradually brought it out, do that crack in the floor. But I, I would take some weight off and kind of just relearn it and get familiar with the depth. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, too many hands. Can't believe you guys are giving free advice. Appreciate it. Give, getting better is a long but rewarding process. Yep. I'm trying to get paid in breast milk, man. <laughs> I'll send you some of mine, Chase. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you were lactating, you know where to find Chase. <laughs> so I always wear black t-shirts just in case. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. Uh, DG Heon MD. What, what is this guy's a doctor? Oh, that squat face does not look. Oh, the one rapper. 
Or seen a single? Yeah. I'm loving all the gear you got, man. Good home gym. Is a great place to start. Yeah. Um, so we can't tell too, too much about what you're doing from this angle. So like with a lot of the other videos, you'll notice they're kind of at a rear or a front 45 degree. That's the best place to start. Um, as for the squat, I'm guessing the stance is going to have to change up pretty significantly. If I had to guess, you're too narrow and your knees are pointed um, or your toes, excuse me, are pointed almost straight ahead. So what you want is for them to be tilted out to the side, uh, 35, 30, 40 degrees, something like that. And you want to focus on shoving your knees out. Um, honestly, at this point, I would just check out the YouTube videos on the starting strength channel, how to squat, check out the blue book, give the squat chapter a good read, a good skim, and then a good read, or maybe the other way around. Um, but this would take a, a, a decent amount of in-person coaching to get fixed up. Yeah. You're getting way too forward in your knees. You're too upright. You just seems like you haven't really learned how we squat. Mm. Yep. And one, one rep sets are pretty hard to form check as well but yeah i guess we still have enough yeah. there to work with yeah um yeah. yep read the book <laughs> watch the videos <laughs> yeah see if you have a starting strength coach local to you man yeah. they'll be able to fix you up in no time yep definitely um uh, okay uh delville tucket oh this looks like some sort of college gym or something i like it there's some turf you can be athletic yeah you can get fit Mm -hmm. it's a pretty impressive gym to be honest i mean that's a great setup i like it yeah. that's very great so kind of going into it i would slow your descent down just a little bit you're getting into your toes at the bottom you're kind of crashing down there Set the knees forward and give yourself a tempo, right? Count the three on the way down. Uh, I like three because I think it works really well for tempos. And then keep shoving your knees out as you approach the bottom. Get a little bit deeper. Other than that, it looks pretty solid, man. Um, I think you're compromising the upper back and it's throwing off a lot, you know. Um, so your wrist position... You want to get it set up perfectly, A plus set up in the rack, but you have to fight to maintain that. So when you're thinking about all the other stuff in your squat, you still can't let your wrists go from here to here, okay? Because that inconsistency is going to make your later reps different than your early reps. You're trying to solve a different problem. Um, all the stuff that Chase had said, you know, uh, but I would focus a little bit more on thoracic extension. So squeezing your chest up at the wall in front of you and then keeping your, keeping your wrists much more straight than they are now, or at least getting a more solid purchase on the bar. Yep. Cool. Thanks, Delville. Uh, send us another video, man, and um, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll take another look at it. Uh, give us a gym tour. Yeah, man. It's a great gym. Let us know where it is yeah. if you don't mind us doxing you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dan Tavern. I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> Hopefully a clean... Yeah, that'd be awesome. The, the mixed grip continental clean. Yeah. Go on down. Here we go. <laughs> nice one, Dan. That was a good grind, man. Mm. Um, I'd start by bringing the yeah. stance in. Uh, so, you know, in the book, they'll go over it pretty extensively. But what we want is vertical arms when viewed from the front. So if you put your camera directly in front of your nose and you're watching it, those arms should hang down plumb, like a rope would hang if it was just hanging off the ceiling. Um, that way, they're going to be the longest that they can be. And your deadlift range of motion will be a little bit shorter. You know, um, so we don't want you having to do a snatch grip deadlift if you don't have to. So I would bring the feet in pretty significantly, maybe about two inches on each side, and then let your grip fall so that your arms are vertical. I think due to that that mixed grip, I think it's been widening out ever so slightly, and his stance has been doing that too. Because I've found myself I've been doing that the same here lately. You got to be careful um, with that grip. Don't really use it unless you have to. You can't hang on to anything else. I would try to work in some uh, double overhanders, even some hook grip. So that way you can kind of get familiar with that uh, narrower stance. And it won't be so mm -hmm. awkward too. Yeah, I have had the same exact thing that uh, 
Chase was talking about whenever my deadlift started getting into the fives, I noticed that on my warm ups, I almost started like curling the bar because I was used to kind of squeezing that bar in so tightly on the top sets that if I was pulling something in the threes, I would have like a noticeable arm bend in my arm, you know. Um, so make sure that if you do use a mixed grip, you are actively thinking about pushing down on the bar, straightening your tricep, locking your elbow out, things like that. Yep, definitely. Uh, good work, Dan. Thanks for the video, man. Still a, mm -hmm. still a pretty a impressive. Grind. Yeah, it was. It was great. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. weight in the bar mm -hmm. as well. It's great. Um, okay. Uh, Steven Roomberg. Rusty needs okay. to stop. Oh, he's one of your mates, is he? One of my dudes. One of your mates. Um, mm -hmm. Rusty needs to start a rusty gym equipment company. Rusty barbells, rusty plates. I like that. That's a good <laughs> yeah. idea. Okay. So, yeah, you can have a whole rusty brand of clothing. Yeah. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure there already is a rusty clothing label. Anyway, um, celebrations. In true SS form, he's not using any safety arms. I think that was... I uh, don't get it. Delville from before in the yeah, impressive okay. gym. Yeah. Uh, Crown of Iron. Oh, we actually has a question. Advice for when you see kids in the gym doing high bar quarter squats in running shoes. I keep seeing them in my gym wasting their potential. Be nice and charismatic and be helpful. Um, and if you are all of those things, people will be drawn to you and then ask you for your advice on things, especially if they think that you are competent at them. So squat a lot of weight, be nice, be charming, um, and help people whenever you can. Uh, giving unsolicited advice is normally a no-go, but unsolicited friendship, people like that. So go up to people, be nice, make friends, and then start that from there. What do you reckon, Chase? Yeah, just be the strongest person at the gym and they'll probably come to you asking for help. Yeah. Okay. And then that's whenever you go, Hey man, lose these shoes, quit doing the silly ass high bar squat and squat like a real man. Yeah. <laughs> what if it's a lady? Uh, <laughs> squat like a real woman. <laughs> True. Uh, where's the titty milk donation button? Pour one out for us. <laughs> yeah. Too many yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And uh, goddamn, these MF are smart. Oh, thanks. These must go. Yep. Uh, next video, Dale B ninety three. I reckon we had old Dale on last week. Old mate Dale. I'm gonna see a pal clean. Yep. Yep. Dale, try widening out your grip a little bit more, man. So you're, you're probably having to go like a hand width wider. That's going to be a lot easier on the rack here. And then get your eyes about 10 feet out more in front of you. That way, whenever you're, you're kind of looking down, almost looking at the jump position, you just have to feel for it, right? And then whenever you jump, big shrug, jump through your toes, right? Get as tall as you can with the jump. So that way you don't have to do like this weird-ass quarter squat and let your toes turn out so much to get underneath the bar. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, uh, I'll see this a lot. I'm interested to hear if this is a phenomenon that you see too, Chase. With people who don't commit to the jump, they will look for the split step. So rather than pulling higher, which equates to that bigger jump, we'll start looking for a separate solution, which is getting the feet out to the side pretty dramatically. Some people will even stagger forward and back. Um, not intentionally, but it'll just happen when they're new. Um, I definitely start by moving the gaze up, like Chase was saying, moving the grip out, and then focusing on really pulling the thing and jumping harder. So jump through your toes, exactly like Chase was saying. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I see that. People start to like starfish, and I, I've even do yeah. it, do it too. It's nothing worse mm -hmm. than a starfish. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, I think that was the last video. I was. Do you want to have a look Did at Larry? Survive? Do you want to have a look at Larry Wheels' press? He's 425 pound press. Sure. Yeah. This is courtesy of Larry Wills' YouTube page. I haven't seen this video in years. Years? It was, uh, this is very I recent, like I think. Was... No, I think like it's like 2018. Ago, right? Really? I thought it was 18. Oh, maybe it was. It came up on my mm -hmm. video feed the other day. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And it will keep coming up until 2030. <laughs> until Chase beats it. Yeah. Yeah, man. This guy has a lot of horsepower. Yeah, he does. Standing shoulder press. I love that name. <laughs> <sighs> that
that's just impressive alone where he starts from. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, would that get three white lights at a starting strength <laughs> lifting meet? At a strength lifting? I don't know. It, it's kind of hard because you can't really see his knees. Um, I don't really think he locks it out of the way with a shrug. But, I mean, mm-hmm. you don't really have to shrug at the top to qualify for a, a good lift. As long as the uh, elbows are, are locked out, it's fine. Yeah. But he definitely would have gotten uh, thrown out by Ripito if he just threw the bar down like that. <laughs> <laughs> With the iron plates. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, need a crane to get it out of the floor. <laughs> yeah, he probably fucked up that floor terribly. Uh, I know he had like the, the bumper plate on, but still, fuck that. The man. one bumper plate. Yeah. I'm sure they have a little like yeah. a sign on the floor. This is where Larry dented the floor. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Chase, uh, I was going to say, like, dude, do you yeah. have lines to a belt company? Could you get your name on the back of a belt and get Lindley on there? Maybe Chase, something like that? <laughs> Maybe. I guess I got to press, idea. what, 430 think, or think, something? Yeah, Rip should know the uh, the Dominion people. You got to get that going, man. What's, what was, what's Rip's nickname for you? It was something albino or something. What was it? There's, he has like 700. So there's... <laughs> well, give us, give the us the vanilla five. Gorilla. <laughs> yeah, so here's like top five. Vanilla Gorilla... He has, what the fuck was it? Nick Dogadio calls me like uh, the Pale Rider. The what? Um, the Pale Rider. Oh, the Pale Rider. It's okay. like, like death, essentially. Yeah. I'm so white. <laughs> um, he, he, he called me something with my grip. Like, uh, fuck, what did he say? Now, I, I had all these names in my head, and I, I'm just forgetting them. But the, the main thing is like the Vanilla Gorilla. Um, and like the white buffalo or some shit like that. <laughs> wasn't there was one with the albino in it, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, he does call me the albino. Oh, it's just the albino. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just, yep. I like the just albino. The albino. One. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. If starting strength's still in the chat, hopefully they can get back to us with that. So, uh, but yeah, um, Stephen Rosen, Stephen Runeberg, Chase is almost there and he's natty. Um, okay. Yep, we know that from last week's episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Stephen Runeberg, people still watch Ronnie Coleman's squat. Man. Amazing. That guy had some tree trunks on him. I think, is it is it like a, you know, a goal to be so, your, your legs so thick that you actually have to kind of waddle? Like they just, is that is that the key? Dude, I don't even want to have pants anymore. I don't wear. I want to wear nothing but like kilts <laughs> or like a tunic. A kilt. Yeah. I'm I'm waiting for the day where Chase is like, I'm done chasing heavy numbers. It's time for bodybuilding. I'm waiting for the day. <laughs> like it'll, it'll be it'll be a good day. He's gonna be like, I'm going to three thirty. <laughs> gonna live there for the rest of my life. We're doing sets of fifteen. It's going on. I'm so excited. What, before we started, Chase, you were eating dinner. Like, what's a normal dinner for you? Kind of comprised. Um, so I just eat basically like dog food, man. So I had ground (laughs) beef and potatoes and gravy, like just simple shit, something I can just hurry up and knock down. But I had earlier today, I had uh, breakfast, which was two eggs, uh, two sausage links, two strips of bacon, hash browns, uh, two pancakes. Then for like lunch, I had like, I guess a quarter pound of sausage Quarter count pound of brisket, um, half a chicken, <laughs> um, some some mashed potatoes, probably like a cup of mashed potatoes, maybe a little bit less, and then like a uh, half a cup of green beans. Yep. And then tonight I'll finish it off with a, a protein shake. So I'll put like three scoops of crunchy peanut butter, uh, three scoops of just whole whole fat uh, breast milk yogurt yeah <laughs> i'm waiting on it and then uh then like probably 75 grams of uh protein mix it all together. a lot of people don't do the yogurt that's a pro technique if you've been using milk and it just kind of gets like too sweet or too liquidy you gotta switch to yogurt man do yeah. you just have like and then a- get like the zero sh- what's up oh go ahead keep going sorry and then you you add the uh zero sugar uh orange gatorade and it's like a sherbet it's amazing nice <laughs> Secret techniques yeah. of the bulk here, everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, do you have a just a vat of insulin that gets delivered to your house every week? To God, I fucking wish, man. 
So I wish I could like grow like my own little biome so I can have like just insulin on stock. So like there, there's always a joke if like there's a, a pandemic that's actually, you know, a pandemic or like a zombie apocalypse were to happen. Like I'm the first one to go out because I would have to raid like fucking every pharmacy from here to about India and just <laughs> hoard all this stockpile of insulin. Or I can just go out in like a blaze of glory and like, you know, if everyone's running to like uh, an escape room or something, I'm over there like holding the door open or like shut. There's like a sea of zombies on me. Like I'd, I'd probably go out like that. Ah, uh, nice. So what? So in terms of how much insulin you use compared to a regular, like you know, type one diabetic, is it a lot more or is there a? I think yeah, just depending on my diet. Like I eat a lot more calories, and so of course, like my insulin has to be a little bit higher than than they. Um, but I, I really don't know. Like I haven't really thought about it or even yeah. asked anybody who else was a type one, but I, I think it, it just mainly depends on the diet. Cause like some days I, I won't use daily, basically anything. And then some days I'm like going through almost a vial. It feels like. Interesting. Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, we got through it fellas, all the videos and, uh, we survived. We survived. Remember to pour one out for rusty. Yeah. If you have some breast milk on hand. He's uh he's got a lot of videos to edit apparently so um mm-hmm. yeah I was I was liking the uh the live Q and A with Rip that was totally unedited <laughs> I loved it that was <laughs> just, hilarious <laughs> just hearing him go yeah we're gonna edit that bit out <laughs> that guy's yeah the first ten minutes of just throat clearing <laughs> killer yeah. uh so Alex where can people find you online if uh, they want to we'll throw a link in the description uh, I do online coaching with lots of folks uh, a lot of athletes uh, a lot of people who are doing cool stuff and people who are just trying to get strong which is maybe the most noble pursuit of them all. Um, and uh chase where can we find you at um instagram just chase lindley and then if you want to look me up on my uh coaching uh online coaching it's just chase lindley on the coaching directory yeah the starting strength and there, there's the link starting strength online coaching.com i think is the uh mm-hmm. yep yeah on there cool all right fellas thanks a lot for your time this week thanks for everyone who left comments and sent form checks and uh we'll uh catch you guys next week Absolutely. See See you guys. guys.